So this is a kind of unusual study for a tree. We're looking for a uh, dead tree. But we're not doing uh, really something for inventory, even though applications of that could be possible, in which case you would then deal with uh, probability and whatnot. We're looking pretty much for, uh, as you could call it, forensic analysis <coughs> and uh, forensic evidence uh, in a case of looking for a tree that uh, had been broken. It's a special tree, but uh, first about the team, uh, we have a, a number of people who are certified uh, in uh, various areas, uh, very experienced in uh, photogrammetric analysis and very experienced in various GIS analysis, as well as uh, image processing and uh, image uh, computer recognition and whatnot. So, the study has been replicated several times. I'll give you a very kind of uh, short version of it just in case you would like a contingency plan of leaving earlier. After uh, this slide, you pretty much know everything. Just after that, I'll go through details for those who are interested in uh, some uh, uh, logistics and some technical uh, methods that we use. So, generally, the story is that there is a famous tree out there that uh, it's a uh, uh, officially declared by uh, two governments and uh, various uh, scientists to do something that other scientists believe is impossible. And uh, they believe it's impossible on various grounds, aerodynamics analysis, uh, loss of physics, uh, general uh, knowledge of uh, uh, available technology and what. There's about uh, 110 scientists in uh, so-called Smolensk Conference, uh, all, uh, most of them professors and uh, PhDs and whatnot, that uh, uh, throw in a conference that is going to have a second run in 10 days. That's where this, uh, originally this presentation was supposed to be presented. Then, at uh, the same time, uh, two government committees, uh, uh, aviation specialists and whatnot, we're not able to find that tree on the satellite imagery and uh, published the uh, wrong coordinates, so you couldn't really find it. Yeah, we had to uh, kind of do investigation of where it was. Then, uh, using uh, various data, uh, sort of uh, enhancing the understanding where to look for what and what it's going to look like, we were able to locate it and then later uh, uh, look at different times from satellite imageries that were available for different dates. And we found that basically, after finding the exact location of it, we found that the tree was actually broken five days before the whole incident and the whole international dispute on the subject was uh, pertaining to it. So, uh, this is the tree. It's a sort of a monument. I, I showed you kind of a, a, a compilation uh, roughly what it would look like, uh, where it would be located on the satellite imagery. This is not meaningful at this point. I'm just kind of trying to with your uh, imagination. This cross, by the way, is one of the uh, fundamental uh, sort of keys to our investigation because we used it for measuring uh, everything else from it. At, uh, knowing the dimensions of that cross, and that cross is on every single picture, there are not hundreds, but possibly, yeah, well, hundreds of the tree and uh, thousands of the trees from that uh, whole incident available. This is what happened. This is what's special about it. The tree is set to break a wing of a 100 ton plane. It's a Tupolev 154M. It's a replica of a Boeing 727. At 40 meters about span of that uh, wing and uh, oh, sorry of its uh, wings, uh, it's a big commercial plane. The tree had about 40 centimeters diameter at the height of uh, allegedly, according to uh, Russian uh, aviation investigation committee, 5.1 meter height, according to Polish uh, prosecutors, depending on the days, varying from uh, uh, 5 to 9 meters, 7, 7.7. .7. They, they couldn't quite make up their mind about it, but they were changing it. The last measurement, I think, was 6.6. .6. So, um, who argues? Well, as uh, institutionally, MAC is the Russian investigative uh, committee. 
that Miller report is a Polish investigative committee that's uh, two governments, uh, one of the biggest countries in the world. Uh, Polish Congressional Committee questioning the legitimacy or uh, the accuracy of the other two. University of Akron, uh, it's a uh, Professor Bienda is a Dean of uh, Aerodynamics uh, Department, uh, Engineering uh, Department in uh, the University of Akron. He's a sort of lead uh, investigator. Small Conference, it's a organization of uh, most of the professors from uh, different countries, universities, and other independent scientists. That, uh, I'm one of them, and uh, I'm actually I'm uh, currently involved with that uh, smallest conference, but I don't represent any of the political formations or uh, governments or the congressional part. Even though last year the a congressman. Uh, Antoni Maciarevich came to our school to thank us for our study that we did uh, relating to it, which was basically just finding a density of that, of that tree. Uh, based on the comparison of, uh, say, kinetic energy generated by that plane, it's about six orders of magnitude greater than the shear resistance of the birch wood. But uh, uh, the, the government sites were claiming that that birch was incredibly strong. A special bird, and uh, we got a uh, piece of that uh, tree from a branch and did a study on silvis scan and uh, infra uh, spectroscopy and, and all kind of the secret state of the world. <laughs> we analyzed the hell out of that tree and got like ten and a half thousand of measurements with a resolution of 25 microns. And, uh, and found that uh, it was not very exciting that that uh, birch tree was made basically of an average birch wood. And, uh, and it was uh, having uh, just quite regular uh, uh, density, uh, pretty much uh, ordinary out of the tables. And, uh, and that fed into the studies of uh, the Professor uh, Ginienda. And, and, uh, and after that, I was called in the Polish newspapers a uh, hyena feeding on the tragedy of. Uh, either and so on and liar and whatnot um, not in relation to that 550 <coughs> kilograms per cubic meter that we uh, came up with but but on just I, I guess general attitude so uh, uh, I still uh, refuse to be any part of any politics but the science of it is quite interesting uh, when you start looking at uh, the and right now the satellite imagery the thing that prompt us to look into it was not even the multitude of arguments that probably would convince anybody with engineering background, like for example the fact that the tree, uh, the, like you said, the kinetic energy generated by the plane is uh, six orders of magnitude greater than the resistance of that tree. But uh, just from a forester point of view, being familiar with wood, working a lot in the wood. I have uh, my first encounter with the birch when, when, when I actually cut it myself was in 1972, which is quite a long time ago. We were collecting uh, juices from that. That's a silver birch, but Metula virucosa. It generates a very uh, friendly juice, a kind of sweet water. It's good for your hair, for drinking, for skin, for anything. And as kids, we were playing with it quite a lot. So, a birch that gets cut, that species, generates a lot of uh, juices. So, this is an example. And then the first thing that hit me after already uh, I was uh, seeing this uh, violent reaction to our discovery that this was an ordinary birch uh, was that uh, it didn't have any juices. When you look at that break, that was, this picture was taken two days after that uh, on, on the 13th and, uh, and it looks completely dry. That's uh, atypical for it. Another thing is uh, the dynamic break of uh, the, the, the plane was flying 80 meters per second. That's about a few nanoseconds contact with that birch. And that's like a bullet hitting the wood. So if you look at it here, you've got those knots there. And they're basically extracted. They're not cut. They should be cut. They should be sure. You see a little branches there. If the wing were even uh, completely broken off, unless it would be made out of styrofoam, it would shave them clean. Uh, if uh, if uh, uh, anything like uh, splinters and so on, in a dynamic cut, you get uh, you get them uh, basically shattered 
they, uh, they uh, get extracted also. If you think of a, of a bullet hitting anything, it's a small uh, hole that it cuts in from the entrance way, and on the outside it's a big uh, just open, open. There, is no, there are no splinters, there are no uh, kind of hanging uh, pieces of it. So that's just like from the first point of view. Uh, seeing this, it was intriguing that this tree uh, just uh, didn't make sense. It was, uh, um, it was looking the way it was. Aside from the fact that there were trees uh, right behind it, and that you would have to, the plane would have to raise from five meters to twenty about to clear them in about a fraction of a second, about a quarter of a second, which uh, exceeds the parameters of any known military plane, including the ones in the Men of Black and. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> in black, sorry. <laughs> well, you know, when you study this thing, then you can appreciate that men in black because it kind of makes you aware of this, uh, of these aliens among us that can make things that we don't understand, which are part of those Russian and Polish reports. So, uh, so anyhow, uh, in short, uh, the break looked like a red herring. Red herring, uh, by the way, for those who, who don't know uh, from this, it's a sort of uh, detraction from the topic, uh, something that uh, means to really detract from what the really issue is. Uh, and uh, it did not look like a result of uh, neither dynamic break, which is uh, something that would happen in a few nanoseconds of the contact, which we're talking about all these uh, things like uh, shaved, shirt, shattered, as opposed to just broken. Uh, nor it looked like it was on April 10, which is uh, would have the juices and would look uh, more fresh and whatnot. So, but that's of course not the proof. So we started looking into our parts. Data, the data we looked at were uh, satellite imagery available, so-called high resolution, so 50 centimeters. And uh, well, as the best we could do, there was some on uh, Google Earth. We purchased some <coughs> from uh, Global Digital. Actually, we bought it from Apollo the Mapping. They have better prices, but uh, but the, that's the reseller vendor is the uh, uh, Global Digital. So uh, then uh, other data, because with the satellite imagery and with the documentation and the, and the government reports and so on, uh, there was just no way to find that tree. And um, uh, other data that we used were from. Uh, a footage of a documentary movie and um, from uh, uh, various ground photography that uh, part of was uh, was a uh, sort of a uh, private uh, a contribution of a, uh, a private person and part of it was a uh, available uh, pictures available on the internet and so on and uh, uh, yeah, I can show you actually that's by the way just the Example of that uh, uh, part of the dispute were uh, Professor Bienda uh, is a uh, keynote speaker at the engineering conference uh, in California and uh, talks about that very issue, the impossibility of, of, of what uh, is reported as what happened. Uh, here is a uh, example of that uh, uh, particular. That's only takes about uh, half a minute. So this is the three, that's the documentary that we took some uh, screenshots from that uh, used as data. This shows a flight over it. And that's what allowed us to actually see where that tree was. Uh, in the, otherwise, uh, there was really no way to see it from the ground photography. So it, it, uh, it uh, shows uh, here next to the trailer. That trailer is a landmark and uh, the distance of everything else. Uh, basically, was what we use as a relational a sort of uh, 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 a relative information uh, or distances to where to look for it. And it's going to fly right back and show it uh, again from another angle. And after that, I'll, uh, I'll stop it. So, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, not available. We, we did get permission to use it. Uh, that's what you saw there. This is here. See, right, uh, right ahead there are these trees that are much bigger. That's where I was talking that in a uh, quarter. Second, I saw the, 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 the plane that jumped 20 meters, uh, and so so uh, there is a little more of shell, but it doesn't matter. This is let's, let's just kill that thing. And uh, my presentation. So these are the part of the data 
that will help us to find out. So the next thing is say, what are we looking for? I mean, this is a so-called high resolution imagery, high meter. It's uh, not something that's going to show you a, uh, you know, branches and leaves and uh, possibly allow you to uh, show the species. So basically what, uh, in order to kind of uh, uh, demonstrate or illustrate to everybody what we're looking for, uh, we generated uh, a simulated uh, pixelization of uh, the image. Uh, you can see uh, the actual <coughs> picture of it is turning the pan chromatic. Uh, here it's uh, pixelized to about approximately that resolution, half a meter. That's what you see, and you see that unless you know what you're looking for, it, there's no, no hope that you can actually find anything meaningful there. So uh, based on that uh, uh, developed uh, geometry and the place that you're looking for, that you know what you're looking for, you know what the expectation is, that you will not see anything that is much less than half a meter. But if uh, the distance between, uh, say, uh, why they think it's like a, in the range of a meter and the length of it is uh, in the range of a few meters, then you're going to see that uh, signal. But how that's going to appear on the picture in terms of configuration of the actual pixels is going to depend on various things. So each of the images, the satellite images, had different angle uh, of the sensor uh, to the ground. It had, of course, different light conditions at the time it was taken, uh, and so on. So one example of which you're looking at approximately four is this. The tree is actually here, but you can't know it unless you actually do know where, where it is. So this is what you like. This is your area of, uh, this is your zone or uh, uh, polygon of examination, and it becomes unambiguous because uh, if it's uh, not, if the tree is not broken, there is nothing white, no reflection, and you got something somewhere here. You don't even have to know where it is if you know it's not there. But here it could be anywhere, and if you see it here, then you can conclusively say that you found it, that the tree was there, unless somebody painted that area, uh, which probably would be the case of the official news after this presentation gets around, uh, or something along that lines. So, uh, the exact location is the key. So, well, of course, we go to the exact location, and here is the, the uh, Biggest country in the world government location. Here's the, maybe not the smallest, but Polish whatever government location. Here's the Wikipedia location. All of this tree. And there's no tree really where to find it. Well, you could speculate maybe this was the tree. Actually, one of, uh, uh, originally one of uh, the people that we were working with. Uh, uh, before we actually knew the location, was arguing that this was the tree. You can clearly see the branches and stuff. And so you cannot see the branches. If you see the branches, see, that means you're you're wrong. Uh, you know, you're interpreting something wrong because the branches will not be recorded on the half a meter pixels. So that's the main thing. You cannot look for branches. You're looking for something else. Well, so there is no tree here. No tree here. No tree. What you have there, though, is like uh, pictures. You've got all kind of information. There about this, but uh, not location. So then we go farther and we start looking at that uh, area of photography and we find where the tree is in relation to various construct uh, buildings, roads, intersections, and so on. And uh, from, uh, from that, then uh, uh, in a combination of those uh, distances, we basically sort of uh, map it on the satellite major location. Then we did a all kind of analysis. I, I cannot tell you even, uh, you know, everything we did because that whole uh, investigation process was changing as we were understanding about uh, more about the sites that appeared that probably 100 measurements that we did uh, earlier were absolutely that necessary. It's just the only it's a one measurement really, which is a distance from that stump to the corner of that trail. But originally now we there's all kind of angles and uh, different zones, so we really have to know where it is exactly. So in order to get that distance, and here's the cross and so on, we did that on various uh, follow, uh, ground photographs. And uh, so you, you know the distance exactly here, and then you basically uh, work out all the other distance. It came out to be depending on a slight difference in the angle distance uh, from the, uh, the focus, uh, focal length and whatnot. Uh, it was about uh, between 10 and 11 meters, 
uh, with the gas, 10 and a half meters in the corner. So, with all this kind of, uh, this is one of the earlier slides, uh, shows all kind of unnecessary additional uh, weights and measurements and so on, but really in the end was uh, uh, the most uh, useful, the most practical, was the geometry, building a map geometry. This is, these are perpendicular uh, directions, 6 by 12 meters basically encompasses that. If you cut off that on diagonal, you end up with this from half to half of that, and there it gives you the, the zone of, uh, of the main ball. The part of it uh, by the, uh, on the top of it could possibly be the branches, but uh, that's not have to be. We really are looking just for the main uh, part. Any part of that track. So, so you go then from again. I just reiteration of what just I just said. Parallel ground photography mapping from vertical projection, creating the satellite, creating a template, moving it between different images. So the first uh, um, the first result uh, the achievement I guess given that the uh, Russian government was incapable of getting it. Polish government was incapable of getting it, and the whole world Wikipedia editors put it. Uh, we got the exact coordinates of the tree, we uh, defined it with this, gave it in all kind of ways to find it, from the distances to landmarks, from the distances to the actual other reported coordinates, and uh, the trailer and so on. Well, now it's then uh, to go into the actual uh, investigation of that tree. Well, that's what the satellite imager looks like, and uh, in the trailer is a kind of uh, saving grace because that's the only thing that you can really see here. And I'm big So this is the trailer. I guess uh, if you don't see it yet, well, stare at it long enough, you'll see it soon enough. It's uh, it's really uh, at one point when you see, when you're watching all these images for a few hours and so on, it starts popping at you, and you really you really can see it <laughs> in a sleep even <laughs> when you fall asleep. So this is uh, in the January picture, that's when the tree was not broken, the trailer is still the same. And basically these three images here, those two and this one, they mark the zone of agreement. Everybody in the world, Russians, Polish, whatever, they all agree that the trailer was there, the tree was not there, I mean not broken here, and it was broken there. So there's no ambiguity here, we're looking for something that everybody agrees on. And there is no particular uh, point of uh, either uh, discovery or disagreement or anything really or shaking. So again, uh, this is in relation. <coughs> Normally, we would be looking Russian coordinates, Polish coordinates, Wikipedia coordinates. We really should be looking here our coordinates, and that's the same basically the other way definition in terms of the angles and the distances where we should be looking for the tree. So that's what we're finding out. Uh, second result is the actual confirmation of existence. Everybody knows where it is. This is our tree. This is the close-up zone, basically, unless they painted it. Well, they didn't. Everybody agrees the tree was there. So that's the, that's the tree. That's the main ball. This part potentially could be the uh, branches, but uh, the really either here or there because that's the stump and that's the main one. And here is the crown, we don't see anything white, no reflection, no broken stump, no uh, uh, no white bark of the bird you flying down. So now is the big question. What was it on April 5? Five days before the before the uh, marvelous things happened that everybody argues about. And that's what it's so now we're looking at this, and that's the satellite imagery, and by the way, con contrary to everything else presented on this conference here, we didn't do any outliers, we didn't do any kind of data cleaning, we didn't do anything with the data. We just took the data the way it was, and it's represented the way that uh, the images came to us. The only thing we did was auto-rectification. We auto-rectified everything to a common place so that we can apply this kind of template there. And uh, everything was auto rectified to the Bing image because that was the only image that, uh, that had a high reputation sort of in terms of reliability of, of the auto rectification. 
the Google images don't agree with themselves, the trailer is moving all over if you go to, from 11s to the 12s and so on. So in the end, the first uh, approach was that we should do it to Google because everybody can use Google and so on. And later, uh, we just uh, the expertise was that, uh, no, this is not professional enough, uh, it's not reliable enough, so we did it to Bing. But otherwise than that, this is what the raw data is, and the question is here. Does this belong to this population, or does this belong to this population? <laughs> well, I guess George Bush had the perfect answer for that one. <laughs> it was going something like, read my lips. <laughs> but uh, basically, uh, this, this was a uh, stunning result. It explains uh, pretty much everything about the juices and the, and the cut and whatnot. At the same time, uh, you have to realize that this is what everybody agrees on, this is what everybody agrees on, this goes against everybody. I mean, everybody, even those who are arguing that the thing was impossible, <laughs> were assuming that the tree was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that changes the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, face of the argument, but that's not the end of the story. What you're looking at here is the time series change. Time series changes in what happened. The stump of that tree, it's under angle, and it's about over a meter off the center. So the top of it is about a meter off the center. So you're having here a uh, a sort of the snag standing like that, and a broken top that is about twice as long as the stump snag, and it's and it's sliding down with time. And here it looks like it's right on top of it. Here it is a little farther, and here is a farther yet, and here is farther still. And, uh, and that's all uh, perfectly fine. And uh, I mean, that's, uh, you know, gravity and everything. And, uh, and evidently somebody was climbing on this thing there, because at one point there were some uh, pictures showing that parts of the plane were embedded into it, and uh, at another point they weren't there. And, uh, and it's, uh, so, you know, even in the plane put the, 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 the pieces there, then somebody climbed them to take them out. Well, unless, of course, it was a Photoshop work, and uh, in that case, the climbing maybe wasn't necessary. But, uh, but that's a, uh, that's a kind of interesting additional information that we didn't even expect to get, is that this thing seems to be right on top of that stamp, which means that likely it would have been broken right about that time. So possibly on the floor, maybe a couple of days earlier, but uh, very, very close to it. Plus, there is a, a lot more of a reflection around the stump, which potentially could be the juices. So that's kind of uh, interesting, unexpected kind of uh, bonus on that. I'm not sure to, uh, it makes perfect sense in terms of rationalization of what, what, what we're seeing here. But that is really not what we're looking for, and it's either here or there, but it's an interesting thing to know that this happened. So the conclusion. Well, the conclusion is uh, basically that, and it was replicated many times, it was done by very competent people, and it was, and I'm not, don't mean even me, uh, we, we had, when we uh, were up to it, we started looking around for, uh, for so, you know, I, I'm not even going to go by myself, and, and, and say that I found that. Started looking at the most competent people we could uh, find uh, anywhere we knew. And, and we got some. I mean, uh, uh, Margaret Madden and uh, uh, Tom and Jordan are uh, basically you know, as, as good as kids there in this area and uh, with experience uh, with uh, forensic analysis and sworn testimonies and uh, in the past uh, work in this area and compare meticulous and so on. And, uh, uh, basically, from what we uh, from what we found, uh, the uh, information, the finding that the tree was broken on the fifth is a fact, and the fact is undisputable. And uh, you may ask, is it possible that we went wrong? Something we did something wrong? Well, I would say theoretically it's possible. But practically it's not. Or, or I would put it maybe this way, that theoretically it is possible, but the probability of it is zero. Which means <laughs> that it might have happened, but it's infinitely unlikely. 
So basically, uh, it's kind of you know like uh, you think of a perfect ball, you drop it on a perfect surface, and uh, at any point you say it will stop on uh, its probability of stopping there is zero, but it stops on some kind of point, always, right? So it is it is possible, but I think it's uh, it's uh, absolutely uh, unlikely. So uh, so then. Uh, What's the expectation was going to happen? Well, I thought that that was a really fantastic news that everybody's going to say, "Oh, you know, how stupid of me! You know, made a mistake then. Let's look for what it really was." But I've been told that it's going to happen something different. That they're going to find witnesses who saw that tree uh, actually be not broken on the on the fifth and and in fact on the ninth, and that the the Pravda, the uh, which is uh, called uh, which is the Russian newspaper in, 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 in English translation, The Truth. Uh, we published The Truth about all these uh, witnesses and you know, the Polish newspapers will repeat that and so on. So, probably it's not the end of the story. And, uh,